Client onboarding is maybe one of the most common processes for small businesses. Uh, for software companies and especially for agencies and really client-based companies and businesses. And it's also pretty much the holy grail of uh, Zapier automations because um, it is all the ingredients that you need for the perfect Zap, which are lots and lots of small tasks that can be easily automated and that are re repetitive and that usually are uh, pretty much similar for every client. So for example, you might want to set them up inside of your Slack channel. So you might like want to create a new Slack channel with that client. Maybe you want to create a folder in your Google Drive uh, account. Maybe you want to set them up in your to-do list application, in your project management board. Uh, all these different uh, things are, that are pretty much standard for every client. And that's what makes it such a great process to automate using Zapier. Um, so if you do have some kind of client-based business or if you do have a business yeah, where you have all these onboarding processes, uh, maybe again, you also have like a software company where you want to like have an onboarding process for people that sign up for a free trial. In these cases, I would really highly recommend that you uh, take a look at this video and that you do implement some kind of process in this way for your business as well. So let's get started without any further ado. This video is part of my Zapier 101 course, which is available on Udemy, Skillshare and my own Teachable platform. And in the course, you will learn everything that you need to know about Zapier starting from complete scratch. So building out your first automations um, to more complex workflows and built in apps uh, to really advanced workflows and automations that will save you hours in your business every week, every month, and uh, will just make your life easier and your business more optimized. The course was specifically designed for beginners. So if you're just starting out with Zapier, uh, then this is the right course for you. It's also only around 10 to $15 depending on where you buy it. Um, and if you sign up through my link for Skillshare in the, in the description down below, uh, you will even be able to access it for free for the first 14 days. So if that sounds interesting to you, then you can check it out through the links in the description down below. And I hope I'll see you in the course. Just one more thing, if you want to, you can actually import the Zap directly because I've shared the Zap with you. So you can, you know, just copy it over to your workspace. Um, you will find the link to that in the description down below. And before we actually start building out this Zap, um, we have to again kind of plan what we need for the Zap. So we have to plan uh, what kind of data do we want to get from the client and then where are we actually going to put this. Um, and there are different things that you can actually do in this type of onboarding process. Um, well, the most obvious and the most basic one would be to get some basic information about your client. And that is something that I would always do because we actually do need most of this um, to make all the other steps of the automation work. So that would be something like an address. Uh, it would be something like the name of the client, the company of the client. Um, it would be something like the email address, phone number, uh, things like this. In addition to that, you can actually also provide information to your client during the onboarding process. So for example, you could have like a YouTube video that actually kind of uh, shows the client how you work as a team, as a company, as an agency, um, and how they can best work with you. So um, where do they have to go if they have any questions? How do you work? Uh, where do you want to be contacted? Um, what can client, uh, clients expect from you? All these things are things that you will probably have to tell your client over and over again. So for each client, you'll have to do that again. Um, so why not just like put it into a YouTube video um, or like a series of videos and then give this to the client during the onboarding process. Depending on the type of business that you actually run, you can also like ask the client for additional information um, so that this is not, will not apply for everybody. But for example, for an agency, you might want to ask the client about uh, kind of his goals. What does he or she want to achieve? Uh, and what does he or she kind of um, want to get out of this uh, col collaboration with you? Um, also, like you can ask them about competition, um, what they like, what kind of like style they like when it comes to things. So for example, for a web design agency, you might ask them um, what kind of other uh, like websites they really like, uh, what their goal with the website is and things like this. And what we'll then do with all this data is we'll use that to get organized internally. So we'll use that to set up all these different tools internally that we use. For example, we'll set up a Google Drive folder, we'll set up a Slack channel, as I said, uh, things like this. And then we'll also use it to plan internal collaboration. So for example, um, just as we did in a previous previous app, um, we might want to have like a kickoff call with the client at some point. 
and then we also might want to kind of plan internally how we're going to best um, kind of help this client um, and how are we are going to prepare for this uh, kickoff call. And lastly, if your automation or your, your programs actually allow that, you could also say that you want to kind of send an invoice to the client um, with the onboarding process so that you have like an initial invoice that you send. This really depends on the invoicing software that you use. Um, I personally don't use that because the uh, tools here in Germany that I use for my bookkeeping, uh, they actually don't support uh, like Zapier. So um, I have no experience with that, but um, I think in the US there are quite a few um, yeah, kind of bookkeeping and tax uh, softwares um, that are actually really good, compatible with Zapier. So um, you might want to look into that if you um, want to kind of send an invoice with the onboarding process. All right, so now let's actually get into the actual creation of the Zap because um, yeah, th this is gonna be a rather long video as well. Um, so I've got the form right here, which is the one that we're going to be using. I've just set this up using some basic questions and it also uses Typeform, which is a software that I really like and I really um, can recommend for these types of things for onboarding and generally just for yeah, you having these uh, nice looking forms. Um, but you could really use any form software that you, that you use. Um, it really doesn't matter. Um, you just have to be able to ask these kinds of questions. Um, so I'm just gonna like walk through this onboarding process and then we can actually set this up. So I'm just gonna be putting in my information here. So I'm just gonna be putting in my name. Um, oh wait, right, I actually do have to uh, fill this out properly. So I'm just gonna be putting in my, my um, first name here. Then I'm gonna be putting in my surname. Then I'll be adding the email address. So this is just my uh, yeah, my normal email address. So these are the fields that we are actually um, kind of working with. So um, add these in as well. So name, surname, and then the email address. Now I have to enter in my phone number, which we actually don't need for the automation, but usually you definitely would want to get the phone number of your client. Um, so yeah, that's why I included in here. So I'm just gonna be putting in my information and then I'm gonna move on to the next step. Now I'm going to be entering the name of my business. Um, in this case, because I have already credit and folder with my actual business name inside of Google Drive, which will then lead to conflicts, I'm just gonna be choosing like a random name here. So I'm just gonna be saying um, great design company. like this. Then how would you describe your project? Well, I'm just gonna say website redesign. This is also something that we're using later on. So just click on submit. And now we actually filled out a form, which means that we again can use that now inside of Zapier uh, to start off this automation. So inside of a new Zap, we're going to be choosing Typeform and then we are going to choose the form that we just uh, created or that we just used. So I'm going to be choosing my normal account, it's this one, and then I'll be choosing the form, which is the client onboarding. Continue, and let's see if we can actually get this response. Yeah, so we got the actual responses and that is looking good. So uh, now we can go on to build out this automation. So for this example, let's say we are using Todoist as our team's kind of to-do list application. Uh, and that's why we obviously want to have a new project in Todoist that actually kind of yeah, shows us that this new client is now like joining our uh, list of clients and that we want to like work with them. That's why we are going to be actually creating a new project here um, for this new client. Um, so I'm going to be choosing my classic Todoist account. And this time we will go over Todoist as well because now it's more important because we are going to add um, many different things to Todoist. Um, so this is the name of the project that we want to create. And in this case, let's go into the form responses and let's get the name of the business because that's obviously what the um, name of the client is and therefore we want to add that as the project name. Let's continue and let's test and continue to see if it's actually working. And indeed it did work. Let's check out Todoist to see if it actually appeared here. 
And yeah, so we have this new great design company project in here, which is exactly what we wanted. Now this is specific to Todoist, but in Todoist, when you create a new project, it's just for you, so nobody else can see it. And that's why, um, because we want to automate obviously every step, um, we are going to be adding some people from our team to this project as well, uh, because we by default want them to be part of the project. Um, so that is something that we can do in the next steps and we don't want the zap to be ready. Uh, we actually want to continue working on the zap. So let's go to Todoist and let's this time choose a different option, which is to invite a user to a project. Because we again want to add additional users to this project uh, that are part of our team. And in this case, the project, we have to choose that from the custom list in here. So we have to go down to create project in Todoist and then choose the ID because uh, we just like created it in the step before and we want to reference that uh, the, no matter what the actual project was. Now we have to enter in the email address. And uh, in this case, I am actually just gonna be choosing um, like a random email address from, from myself. So I think like I'm just gonna be choosing Janosch at Janosch workspace. Com. Continue and let's test and see if this works. Yeah, so indeed the invitation was sent to Todoist. Let's check out Todoist itself and we see up here in the share menu, we see that this is pending. So we sent out an invite to this email address that they can now join this project. Now you can actually add more than just one person to your projects. Um, and you can do that by just adding this step again. So just create the same exact step again and then choose a different email address. And then you can do that over and over again. Um, obviously that's not interesting for this video. So now that you know how you can do this, you can um, like uh, add as many people as you want um, if you want to add more than one. Next, we'll actually be setting up our new client in Clockify, which is a time tracking software that you can use to track how much time you've spent on the client project. Um, so especially if you do hourly billing, um, then this is really, really helpful for your team. And again, you can automatically set that up using Zapier. Um, so let's just quickly choose Clockify. And it's again, really simple. So there's not much happening. It's just some nice repetitive work that's being automated. And in this case, we want to create a new client first. And then we are going to click on continue. We'll click on my Clockify account, continue again. And then for the workspace, we'll choose uh, just my basic workspace. And again, the client name is just going to be the name of the business that was entered on the onboarding form, like this. Then we can continue again and we can send the data to Clockify to check if it's working. All right, so it seemed to work. Let's check out Clockify and let's go to clients and let's go down here. And here we actually do see the great design company. So that's really, really nice. And yeah, now we can actually go on. Now in Clockify, the organizational structure is you have like the client and then you have projects for that client. So in the next step, we're actually going to be setting up this project for this client. All right, so back in Zapier, just go to the next step. Again, use Clockify. And then in here for the action event, we are this time going to create the new project. And for this, we will actually just use the project description that the client gave us. So um, we are going to choose the same workspace as before. And this is where we'll pass in the information from our type form. So we'll go down and we'll take a look at the um, project. So web design, website redesign, that's the project. Put that in here. For the client, we'll actually choose the, um, the uh, ID that was created in here, because again, we want this to be dynamic and it should be based on the previous step. Um, so we have to use the ID here. The project can be public and it's also billable. So these are just settings in Clockify, uh, which we don't need to worry about for now. Um, so let's continue and let's see if this actually works. Test and continue. And indeed, a project was sent to Clockify. So let's go to projects and let's go down to website redesign right here. So we have website redesign and it's for a great design company and it just has been added in here. Perfect. Next, we'll be setting up a dedicated Slack channel for this client instead of our Slack account. 
um, so that we can com communicate internally about this client, plan projects, uh, plan how we're going to do the work for the client and so on. And this is again going to be pretty simple. We are going to be adding a Slack channel in here, uh, which is an easy to do task using uh, the Slack integration in Zapier. But this is the first time that we're actually going to create a channel. So we are going to choose this from down here and then we'll continue as always. The Slack account is going to be my standard account. And then again, we are going to enter in the channel name. Now this channel name is actually um, like, we have to put in the business name again. And if it like, if, if it had spaces in there, um, then the space it would be replaced by like dashes by Slack. Because the channel names in Slack, they are always like lowercase and with dashes between the words. Um, so yeah, but this actually works fine. So we don't even need to worry about that. Let's continue and let's actually test if this works. Perfect, so it actually worked. Let's check out in Slack and see if it worked in there. Um, yeah, okay, so we do have this great design company Slack channel now, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, the next step is to actually add people in here, which we also don't want to do manually, so we'll do that using Zapier as well. So we'll just add a new step in here. Again, choose Slack. Then we'll choose the appropriate action event which in this case is going to be invite user to channel. Um, now you have to be careful here because you actually only can invite people that already are within your Slack workspace. So you can't use this to like um, invite external people like the client himself. So the users have to be in your Slack channel already. Um, and in my case, I think I only have like a demo user in there. So um, I probably will only have like one to choose from, but uh, that's okay because it's again, just a demo. All right, so for the channel, we are actually going to be choosing the channel we would just create it again. So this is, uh, I don't know if we actually can use the name or if there's like an ID that we have to use. I think we can just use the channel ID that's safer than, uh, yeah, just going with the name. All right, and the user that we will add is just um, the test user in this case. So I just have a test user, which then is going to be added to the channel. Let's continue and see if this works. Yes, so it actually worked. Let's go to Slack and see if it worked in here. And yeah, indeed. So we have Jana Sherman joined great design company along with test user. So we just added test user. And we now, if you, as you see up here, we now have both of these users in here. And you can obviously um, like add in more people. Again, you could, in, in this case, you can just add them all in this one step. So if you have like five people, just add them all in there. Um, and then you're good to go and they will always be added to new client projects. Now let's suppose that we want the client to share additional media files with us later on, uh, like after the onboarding process. And usually what you would do, or at least in my case, is to use Google Drive for that. And probably you also like create a new Google Drive or OneDrive or whatever kind of uh, cloud storage that you use folder for every new client. And that's exactly what we'll do in here. And we'll also actually add in like a little folder structure that we can then always use for every client project so that we always have like a structured approach to the new client projects. So let's actually do this by adding a new step in here and at this time choosing Google Drive as the action event or like as the uh, step. Now for the action event, we are going to scroll all the way down to the find a folder option um, because we do want to look for the folder first. Um, so if any like error occurs and the folder has been created already, uh, then we don't want to create it again for the next time. So we only want to have one kind of folder for this client. And so we are looking for the client folder first and if it's not there, then we'll just create a new one. Um, so let's choose that and let's actually implement that in Zapier. I'll choose my classic Google Drive account and the folder name in this case is going to be uh, again the company name. So great design company. The drive is going to be just my Google Drive. The parent folder will just leave that out. I'll just put it in like the root folder. Um, should this be considered a success when nothing is fault? No, it shouldn't. Um, and if the folder doesn't exist, do we want to create a new one? Yes, we do. So, oh, sorry. Uh, we, I, I just want to click on the box. Yeah, okay, perfect. So we do actually want to create a new folder if this doesn't exist. Now we can remove these extra fields 
And now let's continue and let's see if this actually works. Now I obviously don't have a great design company folder in my like root directory of my Google Drive structure. Um, so it should actually create a new one for us in this case. So let's test and continue and it worked. Let's go to Google Drive. And yes, indeed. So we have this new folder, great design company in here as well. It's empty right now, but um, it's time for us now to actually fill this up. So what we are going to do is we'll just enter in, like we'll just add in um, different subfolders to that folder. And I'm just going to show you one example, but you could obviously have tens of thousands, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, but um, you could have like a couple of different folders in there that you use all the time for your clients and you can like set up your structure for every new project. So let's actually do this for a new folder. Let's say create folder. And then we are going to go into the same exact folder as before, choose Google Drive. Then for the drive, we are going to choose my Google Drive again. And now for the parent folder, this is where we have to choose uh, the folder based on the ID. So we have to use this ID in here. Then for the folder name, this is where we can like be creative. So um, in this case, I would just say images and videos. And maybe that's like the uh, first folder in the list. So we'll give it a one so that it actually is in the order. And um, then let's continue and let's actually test this action out. And it seems to work. Let's go to Google Drive. And yes, so inside of this folder, we now have the images and videos folder. And now you actually can, you know, like create additional folders like uh, company branding or uh, you can have like um, like legal documents that you share with the client. Uh, all this kind of stuff uh, can be auto generated or like the folder structure can be auto generated for you each time you have a new client onboarded. So I'll just speed up through this process and I'll actually add in a couple more folders so that you can like really get a feel for how this would look. All right, so now I've actually set up a couple more folders and I think now you can actually get a sense of how this would look. And you can obviously also have folders within the folders that you create. So you could create this uh, images and videos folder or let's say like the branding folder. And then inside of the branding folder, you could have like uh, the logo, you could have like the branding guidelines as a folder uh, and so on. So you could really like make this really specific and have a really clear structure that's always the same that also helps your team to uh, kind of find where things are much better and that makes it clear for your uh, client where they have to put things. Now that we've set up the basic structure for a client in our own systems, uh, we can go on to kind of plan how we're going to proceed with the customer. So uh, we can go on to plan, you know, how we are going to do this internally. Maybe again, you have like tasks that you still have to do that can't be automated. For example, um, you can't automatically share the Google Drive folder with your client yet. I think that's not possible. This is something where you then have to like add in manual tasks. And what we can do to help you to not forget these manual tasks is to actually create an automated reminder of the manual tasks uh, inside of Zapier. And that's the next thing that we're going to do. So in here, we again are going to choose Todoist because this is the project management slash task management tool in this case. And now we are going to create a new task, which is going to be inside of this project that we are uh, just setting up. So uh, this is going to be for maybe like one person in your team that is responsible for kind of like ma managing the clients and then he or she can do these onboarding tasks and be assigned the onboarding tasks as well. So um, let's say for the project, this is going to be the custom one. So this is the product we created in here. Then the title is going to be finish onboarding. And here you can actually just paste in like some tasks that I've created. So maybe you want to invite the client to the Slack channel. Maybe you want to have it just internally, or you can also like invite the client to it. Um, invite the client to Google Drive so that he or she can upload the uh, files to Google Drive. And then also like schedule internal strategy session and things like this. So uh, these are all tasks 
um, that maybe one person in your team can then do once the automation is kind of being processed. And I would highly recommend that this is something that you assign to a specific person. So if you are more than one person um, running your business, um, I would really choose a person that always does this for the clients um, because then you have some clear responsibilities here. So in this case, I'm just going to assign this uh, to myself. <laughs> and uh, the due date, let's say that is today because we want to do this like pretty much immediately. And then the priority is going to be urgent. Okay, let's continue and let's see if this actually works just how we want it to. So let's test and continue. And let's actually go to Todoist. And as we see in here, we now get this finish onboarding tasks right here. We also see that it's assigned to myself, uh, that it is due today and that it has a high priority. And if I click on this and go to comments, we also see uh, the notes that we got in here. All right, so now we're almost wrapping up here. We just want to add two additional steps. Um, one of them is going to be to have a actual notification instead of Slack so that you actually uh, kind of get notified once the client actually has finished the onboarding process. Um, because otherwise you might not actually realize it directly because everything is just happening automated. Um, and then you might, you know, just realize it like two days later, which isn't optimal. So um, in this case, what we want to do is just to send a Slack message um, to kind of tell all the relevant team members um, that this new client has just finished the onboarding process. So we are going to send a channel message to the channel for the new client, which we just created in the previous step. So uh, we are just again going to use the ID for this. Um, so let's pick custom. Let's go to create channel in Slack, then choose the ID right here. Oh, we actually pasted it in already. We only need it once like this. Perfect. And then let's say um, new client has just finished the onboarding process. Maybe you want to give it like an emoji. If you want to, you'd say like party like this. Then we could also like pass in like the client name. So let's put that in here as well so that we actually know what client it was. Um, and then let's say, um, please schedule the internal strategy call. So this is like a, a nice reminder because now we actually tell ourselves that we need to plan this internal strategy call, um, which we want to happen so that we can, you know, like plan how we are going to work with the client in the best way. Perfect. So we're going to send this as a bot. Again, all these other things we don't need. We can turn this off because it's just annoying. We can actually auto expand links. We don't even have a link in here, so we don't need this. Um, and so let's actually just test this and see if it's actually working. So let's go to test and continue and it seems to work. Let's check out Slack and indeed. So we get the new client has just finished the onboarding process. We get the name of the uh, client and then we get the message, please schedule the internal strategy call. Now, the last thing that we actually want to optimize or that we want to automate is the kind of follow up after this onboarding process. Um, so because like the client relationship isn't finished after that and we want to automate as much as possible. So what I recommend you do is that after the onboarding process, you send out an email to the client kind of thanking them for uh, filling out the form, filling out the onboarding process, and then like kind of telling them what's next um, sending them the link to the uh, like Google Drive, to Slack and whatever tools you want to share with them. And uh, yeah, then like kind of telling them how it's going to go down. So maybe again, also uh, planning the kickoff call and things like this. And to make this even easier for you, we can actually create a Gmail draft inside of Zapier. So we can like uh, automatically generate a new draft inside of Zapier that you can then like kind of look over and then send to the client um, once you're ready. And that even automates the next follow-up step for you pretty much completely. Um, I just recommend that you like check over the email again. So maybe, you know, you want to change something, but you like can have like a template that almost applies to every company and then um, you can do it like this. To create this step, let's choose Gmail in here. And then we are going to put in some information. I have actually like pre-written like an email template just because it like it's, it takes too much time to write that in here. But yeah, so let's just create a draft and let me show you how you can do this. Um, we're going to choose this Gmail account um, and obviously you can choose whatever account you want. And now we can actually again use the information from the type form. So we can now get the email address of the client 
to send this email to as well. And for, for the from email, we can actually just choose like the email that we are actually using. I would also recommend that you put in the from name. So let's actually do that right now. Janos from Janos Workspace, like this. For the subject, we can say something like, um, thanks for completing the onboarding process. And we could even pass in the name right here. So we could get like the first name of the client. Um, if we have like an informal relationship, um, if not, then I would probably not do that. But uh, you know, if you have um, clients that are really like, yeah, not too worried about like being called with a first name, um, then I would actually just put in the name right here. Now for the body, I've just like, again, like pasted this. Um, this is, we'll have to change that. Um, but you can just say something like, yeah, thanks for filling the onboarding form. You know, here are the tools that we use to work. You can put in the link to the Google Drive folder, link to the Slack channel. And then you can also tell them that you need some additional information from them. For example, you need the login information for their web hosting account. Uh, because you are going to uh, like redesign their website and things like this and also then again you can use this to um, like take them or like give them a link to book a strategy call if you want the complete automa automation um, where they also can like automatically book the um, like onboarding call kickoff call uh, with you yeah perfect i'm not going to customize this too much you can obviously do whatever you want in here uh, i'm just going to put in the name in the like um, at the top as well so uh, that the like name is customized like this and then um, i'm just going to continue and to see if this actually works and indeed it actually did work let's go to gmail and let's check it out and let's go to drafts and indeed in here we have this new draft which is going to be sent to the client email it has uh, like the the um, title is thanks for the onboarding process Janos then here we have the name as well so that, that was dynamically pulled in from the form and then we have all the information that we need and that is how you can create a really nice onboarding process for your clients in your business um, obviously again you can do much more than this um, you can add more people to the different projects you can have more granular like control over what happens when the client does what uh, and much more but uh, i just want to show you um, a really good use case that can really save you hours um, if you like have an agency um, if you use this workflow i've actually implemented this for a uh, like a good friend of mine who runs a social media agency and it has really like changed his agency because uh, it always like saves him like a couple of hours of work for each client and if you have met many clients and you have to like you know pay your your um, employees as well then this is just a lot of time saving and uh, in the end it's uh, better for your bottom line all right so i hope this video was helpful to you uh, i hope you get, did get something out of this uh, video and it was like an inspiration seeing how uh, you can use this for this onboarding process um, that's it for this one and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Again, this video is part of my Zapier 101 course which is available on Udemy, Skillshare and my own Teachable platform. And in the course we go through everything that you need to know starting from complete scratch uh, all the way to more advanced workflows. And this will actually help you save countless hours in your business uh, on tedious work and tedious tasks that can be easily automated through Zapier. Uh, the course was specifically designed for beginners as I said and it's only around 10 to 15 dollars. Um, so if you thought about starting to learn more about Zapier here, uh, then this is the right tool for you, the right course for you, um, and I hope I'll see you there. The links to all these courses are in the description down below, and if you sign up for my Skillshare course, uh, then you will even be able to access it for 14 days for free um, through my link in the description. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.